Welcome to the Dice Gods, my name is Hydra, and, well, you asked for it, so we're doing it. A review of the final German book for Flames of War, Late War, Berlin German. Thanks to Battlefront for sending us a copy of the book for review about a year ago. Sorry it took us long to get this out in the wild, we are just a little late. Still, hope it's worth the wait. Before we get into it, a reminder that you could have already seen this video. A members only cut of this dropped a week ago for our channel members and patrons. If that's not bad enough, that version also had some list ideas and was just one week more awesome. So if you'd like to see that and all future member cuts videos, consider joining up for our channel membership. It's less than a painting light from Timu and lasts way longer. Speaking of members, thanks to our first YouTube member, Joe Rogers, for supporting the channel. Berlin German is the last of five German books for Flames of War version 4 Late War. Covering the period of January to March 1945, this book covers the dying days of the Nazi regime. It is, therefore, a book which features both extremely exhausted veterans and fanatically green troops. That's right, your troopers either want to run away or are nuts, but need a best of three to figure out which end of the gun a bullet comes out of. Let's start by looking at the book in numbers. Berlin German includes eight formations, split with five focused on armour and three on infantry. Interestingly, all of the armoured formations allow you to build some infantry into your core formation, to some extent or another, while the infantry can only access armour as a support option. Next, what's new in the book? Let's be honest, we come first for the toys, then the formations. So in this book, we get some interesting new things to play with. First of all, we have a new game mechanic which impacts specific units in specific situations, infrared or IR technology. While still relatively new, IR technology in-game gives the German player distinct advantages in night fighting games. Usually you roll a die to figure out how far you can see on the night visibility table. With an IR equipped unit, you actually roll two dice and keep the highest. In the book, you'll find IR equipped Panthers and Jagd Panthers, so if you want a bit of a twist, this is a cool way to play. It's also available as a buff to certain infantry as well. Additionally, you can take the SDKFZ251 Uhu within some units. This is a half track with a dirty grey IR spotlight which negates the roll on the night visibility table entirely. You can simply spotlight one target within 32 inches, then all IR equipped units can fire at that target without needing to roll on the table. All very fluffy, all very flavourful. Then we get into the new-ish units, the Panzer II. Although you can find this earlier in the war, they reappear here as part of training companies. These did little tanks can cause problems for infantry and light transports, but against armour they're basically victims. Still, cute tank is cute. Speaking of cute, the Panzer III is back with a gun. Having spent most of the late war as an observation post, you can take them in Berlin German with 5 or 75 centimeter guns. Again, down to the training companies, it's nice to see these guys back. With a reasonable amount of armour and a gun to worry many allied tanks, they're pretty cheap for what they do. We've seen Marders before in late war already, but never the Marder II. Is it any good? A 75 centimeter pack 40 on a lightly armored tank hunter? Nice. The points? Uh, to be honest, a little steep, but there's still a nice inclusion. Speaking of pack 40s, there's the SDKFZ 234 Heavy Scout Troop, which lets you take either a pack 40 or a 7.5 centimeter pack 40 on a Puma chassis. The result? A big boomstick on a spearhead scout unit. Fun and shockingly cheap. Just don't get shot at, okay? And we're not done with the Pack 40, as we have the armoured 7.5cm tank hunter platoon. Essentially, an SDKF Z251 with a Pack 40 slapped on top. It's got no armour, but it's got a big gun. Somewhat of a theme in this book, but again, not cheap. Interestingly though, these can appear in a core formation, so they could have some pretty good uses. Next we have a unit whose name I'm going to slaughter. It's the very niche. Alf Clara 38T, a Panzer 38T with a 2cm turret on top. 
Only 50 were made, and you can have three of them in your army today. With Spearhead and Scout, they're an interesting addition to confuse your opponent. Mostly for the what the hell is that factor. If you've ever wondered what happens if you slap six Panzer Shreks on a demolition carrier, Berlin German has the answer for you. The Klein Panzer Vans. These guys have no armour, no range, but could, in theory, be devastating. They were designed and used within the confines of city streets to conduct hit and run attacks. And that's what they're for in game. Big, wide open spaces are not these little guys' friend. Now, what the world needs more of is vehicles designed around a hoofing great gun. If you agree, to that end, the 8.8cm Waffentrager is here to make your day. This is a gun carrier with a Pack 43 8.8cm gun on top. It might have no armour, but that anti-tank 17 is going to leave a mark. Still, at over 5 points per gun, you would hope so. Then we're into a raft of new infantry types. Berlin German features a formation with insane levels of infantry options. Some we've seen before, some we haven't. First we have the Volkstern platoon, basically armed locals. They're unskilled, badly motivated and easily hit. Armed with K98s and Panzerfaust, their rate of fire isn't amazing either. Even if you strap in their LMG option, they're not the best. But for their points, they're cheap, warm bodies on objectives. And then we have the Hitler Jugend or Hitler Youth. They have all the lack of skill, are actually hit on a 2 plus, but are bonkers with a motivation of 3 plus. You can also take them as Panzerfaust only teams to spam anti tank. Again, cheaper than most, but likely to be slaughtered if anyone gets close and they're not dug in. Away from that big formation, you have the Panzer Sturm troops, STG 44 armed infantry with a surprising rate of fire unless you start pinning them. With the new units covered, let's take a look at the formations in this book. We're going to run through each and discuss their key points as we go. Let's start at the start with the masters of night operation, the Klauswitz Panther IR Tank Company. As the name implies, this one centers on late war Panthers kitted out with IR kit. In the compulsory slots, we have a Panther HQ, which in this formation is a single tank, then a Panther platoon, and then it gets fun. For the second compulsory slot, you can take Panthers, Jag Panthers, Panzer 470s, Panzer 4s, Tigers, or Stugs. Whatever armor amuses you. This helps, as we'll see, to keep the cost down just a little. In the optional slots, we have another Panther platoon, or Armored Panzer Grenadiers, or Panzer Sturm Infantry, with the option for half tracks. It's nice to have combined arms option here. Mixing infantry with armor makes both a little more resilient and flexible. The last optional slot is a mass of AA, either Ostwin's triple 15 mil or two centimeter flak. Overall a small but well-rounded formation. Let's take a look at some of the units in more depth. On the Panthers, the soft stats really set the tone for this book. Hit on four plus, a veteran skill of three plus, but poor motivation on five plus. For most of the formations in this book, you're going to see that either skilled and hard to hit or motivated. Aside from that, these are the same great Panthers you'd expect with front armor 10, which is nice. The AT-14 40 inch range gun, which is very tasty, but around nine to 10 points per tank and limited to three in a platoon, you won't be rocking many of them. You can pad these out a little bit with the SDKFZ251 Uhu units, but only if you plan to play night fighting, so that's pretty niche. All of the other options in this formation share those same soft stats. Good skill, good hit on, but that 5 plus motivation. But they're all pretty high pointed, so a formation of HQ and three teams of three Panthers will cost you 97 points for 10 tanks. With many games taking place at 100 points, you'll need to mix in other options to have a viable and flexible list. You can, however, get something in every slot of this formation for 45 points if you check the cheapest minimum sized options. But on balance, unless you're playing night operations, I think there are better options in this book. Our next formation is similar to the last, but for me, way more kick-ass. That's right folks, it's the Stug life. The Klauswitz Stug Assault Gun Company is all about spamming the perfect flat panzer, the Stug. Like the Panther formation, you need to take a single Assault Gun HQ, then a platoon of either three Stugs or three Stews, then you can add in more Stugs or Stews, which is the right thing to do. 
or you can add in IR Panthers, IIA Panthers, or normal late war Panthers. Next, it's your optional additions to this formation, and it's more Stugs, which is correct, or some infantry, then the AA cocktail as the last optional slot, but Stugs is definitely the way to go. As with the Panthers, the soft stats are the same. Great skill, great to hit on, terrible motivation. Not being Panthers, the Stugs are a lot more cost effective, so you can max yourself out with an HQ and three platoons of Stugs for only 43 points. Genius. Moving on, Formation 3 is our first infantry formation, the Klauswitz Panzersturm Company. This formation is a good way to get an interesting infantry focus list, but with some anti-armour punch in the core formation too. Compulsory choices in the black boxes are an armoured infantry HQ, then either a Panzersturm or Panzergrenadier platoon. The third is either a triple 50mm or 2cm flak AA platoon, so some extra fire support for the infantry. So it's a nice cheap option for that second compulsory slot. Then you have the same combo of two infantry and then two more AA options in the next optional boxes. With that, the fun starts. Artillery support comes in the form of either 8 or 12 centimetre mortars in one optional box. Then we have either the 7.5 centimetre or pack 40 armed half tracks for some tasty punch. The last optional box is IR Panthers, IR Yag Panthers, Stugs, or normal late war Panthers. So some really armoured support for these guys. Minimum size, this formation comes in at only 14 points. So you can really build out a large formation with a lot of warm bodies in, making it durable, but with a mix of units, it's also quite capable. Our next formation is for those who like it heavy, the Panzer Battle Group. As the name implies, this is all the armour all the time. The HQ is one or two of either Panther, Panzer IV, Panzer IV 70 or Stug vehicles. Then we have three slots which are identical, two compulsory, one optional. These all let you take platoons of Panthers, Panzer IVs, Tigers, Stugs or Panzer IV 70s. As none of these are IR enabled, even the Panthers, you can take them in platoons of up to four vehicles. For the rest of your options, you can take a platoon of Hetzes, either a platoon of Oswinds or Werberwinds, and a single escort platoon of infantry. As you'd expect, the cheapest option is Stu's, with two platoons with a single tank HQ coming in at 20 points. This formation might be one of the weaker in here. Much as it does let you take all of the armour, it's going to be pretty light in number in the core formation if you want infantry too. Still, maybe there's another formation later in the book which could offset that? We call that foreshadowing. The next formation is the first of the training twins, the Heavy Tank Training Company. This formation is a mix of heavy armour, rookie troops and veteran leaders. The armour in this formation is no joke, consisting mostly of Tiger 2s, Tigers and Panthers. Compulsory choices are an HQ which can be either a Tiger 2, Tiger or Panther, then a platoon of either Tiger 2s or Tigers, then another platoon of Tiger 2s, Tigers or Panthers. That's some heavy metal. Optional choices let you take another platoon of Tigers, a platoon of Panzer threes, then either cheap armoured training Panzer Grenadiers or expensive late war Panzer Grenadiers on foot. The HQ in this formation is a rare hit on 4+, plus, 4 plus motivation, 3 plus skill combo. Very nice, but only on a single tank. These can, however, improve the tactics rating of platoons within 6 inches by plus 1 with their old hand special rule. The rest of the heavy armoured platoons are then hit on 3+, plus, 4+, plus motivation, and 5+, plus skill. The Tiger, Tiger 2, and Panther platoons come in 2 or 3 tank options, whilst the Panzer 3 can have up to 4 tanks and gets a 3+, plus remount due to protected ammo. Your cheapest version of this formation is 42 points for a Panther HQ and 4 Tigers. With the heavy hitters in this formation mixed with the infantry, this formation can be surprisingly resilient, plus who doesn't want to feel the force of big, big cats? The second of the training twins is the Tank Training Company. This is similar to the heavy option, but based on Panthers, Panzer IVs, Stugs and Hetzers. Your compulsory core formation is an HQ of either Late Panther, so no IR, Panzer IV, Stug or Hetzer. Then you can pick a platoon of Panthers, Panzer IVs, Stugs or Hetzers, with the last platoon being either Panzer IVs, Stugs or Hetzers. That's right kids, if you've been longing to spam Hetzers like a maniac, your time is now, you crazy maverick. The optional choices repeats that mix of Panzer IV, Stugs or Hetzers. Then we have a platoon of either Panzer IIs or threes. The triple 15mm flak gives you some nice anti-infantry decker. Then we have two options of either cheap armoured training Panzer Grenadiers or expensive late Panzer Grenadiers on foot. 
The stats here are the same as on the heavy, with the HQ having a 4 plus to hit and 3 plus skill, and the rest being 3 plus to hit and 5 plus motivation. Your cheapest valid option here is 5 hexes in 3 slots for only 14 points. So that's a choice you could make, but this formation certainly has some fun builds to play with. It's certainly worth a look. If you want to take a focused Fortune Jaeger spam formation, this next one is for you. The aptly named Berlin Fortune Jaeger Company is an infantry fest. Compulsory is an HQ of two stands of infantry, then two Fortune Jaeger platoons of seven to ten stands of infantry with either MG42 K98 combos or STG 44s. Either way, that's a minimum of 16 stands of infantry, and we're just getting started. The optional choices are another Fortune Jaeger platoon, an SMG42 platoon, 8cm mortar platoon, 12cm mortar platoon, 7.5cm light gun platoon, 7.5cm tank hunter platoon, and a scout platoon. You can have one of each of those, and if you do, I really hope you enjoy painting infantry. These guys, however, are nuts. Hit on 3+, plus, 3+, three plus motivation, and 4+, plus skill for most, with some being 5+. Plus. There's a lot of them, but they're not so great with the orders and assault side of the game. A minimum size formation is only 22 points, though, fun fact, you can have max size units in every slot and only spend 75 points. Again, if you love painting little dudesmen, then this one is definitely for you. Speaking of infantry spam, this is what we were foreshadowing earlier. The ultimate infantry spam is the Berlin Battle Group. Here we find the really scary side of the end of the war, with citizens and children taking up arms to defend their capital. The compulsory options are an HQ of two STG44 teams, then two choices from a huge list. For those last two compulsory, you can take Late War Panzer Grenadiers, SS Panzer Grenadiers, Volkssturm, Hitler Jugend, Vox Grenadier Assault Platoons, Panzer Grenadier Training, or Fulsham Jaeger Platoons. Optional choices are another one from that long list. Then we have support of SMG 42 or 34, 8 cm or 8 cm SS mortars, 7.5 cm or 15 cm guns in normal or SS variant, then a 7.5 cm in normal or SS. The range of different options in this formation would be a video in themselves to summarise, but suffice to say you can choose from the very poorest trained to the most experienced. It's a balancing act between numbers and ability. You'll almost certainly be needing some armour to support these guys, so maybe don't take all of the Panzer Grenadiers. Minimum size on here would be the HQ and two platoons of either Volkssturm or Hitlerjugend, which would come in at 12 points for a legal formation, though how long that would last is debatable. And that's our last formation. As usual, we then have loads of support options. Specifically, in this book, 33 of them. Aside from the new stuff highlighted way back at the start of this video, standouts include Tiger 2s, Marders, Jag Tigers, Jag Panthers, and Elephant Platoons in support. You'll also find the usual mix of Vesps, 10.5cm, Hummel, and Neverwerfer artillery, along with the trusty 88 in two flavours. Last are the aircraft, but as usual, your mileage on those will vary. The book then dives into painting guides, basing guides, and city fighting, plus a linked campaign to run through ending in a mission called Blood on the Streets. Rules for obstacles and fortifications are included, along with stats and points for tank turrets and machine gun nests. But we're not done yet. You then get the night fighting rules and a special mission to use them in. And with that, we're into the catalogue of wallet incinerating goodies at the back of the book. If you want to see some sample lists, those are available in the members cut of this video, which was available to our patrons on Patreon and YouTube members a week before this video is released. Just saying. So, is Berlin German a good book? Yes. Is it the best of the five? No. But that actually reflects the condition and general disarray of the German forces at this point in World War II. As the Third Reich disintegrated, it wasn't a pretty or organised time. It was a mess, and that is expressed in the stats and options available in this book. Everything was being thrown into one last attempt to avoid defeat. From a competitive perspective, I don't think the Berlin German lists are going to be taking home any tournaments anytime soon. You can do some interesting things, but not as potently or efficiently as in previous books. If you want to play out battles around the fall of Berlin, or are looking for more fluffy choices, 
or just love painting infantry, then this book is a must have. But if you're a super competitive player, I think you're better off skipping this one. So have you played with or faced forces from this book yet? And if so, how has it gone? Any favorite units or formations? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a like, subscribe and share the video if you're feeling kind. And if you are feeling kind and haven't yet, consider either joining our Patreon or YouTube membership to get access to exclusive videos, early videos and much more besides. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.